Welcome back to Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, and I am joined on this segment of the program by Morris County surrogate, John Picarero. And we are going to learn about the surrogate's court uh, and its function here in Morris County. John, welcome to the All program. Right. Thank you for having me, Joe. This is very, very a pleasure for me to be here. Now, when I say the word surrogate, Right. <laughs> um, I think of a substitute or a proxy. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the surrogate's court or the surrogate's office, what does that word mean? Well, it's a very old English term. It actually does mean substitute. The, 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 king, the king of England was really the person who had to decide what, when land was divided among people when someone died. And his substitute in New Jersey was the governor. And the governor then eventually became the surrogate in place of the king and queen of England when land had to be divided when somebody died. And then his deputies were sent out to different counties, got the title of surrogate, and that title stayed with us even after the Revolutionary War. So it does actually mean substitute. Interesting, because mm -hmm. that's the word freeholder also is a oh, okay. throwback. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to when the, the colonists came over. So New Jersey has kept uh, a lot of that tradition, uh, so sure. to speak. I'm not uh, a, su a surrogate no, no, mother. Are, I'm not a surrogate <laughs> father. You are it's the, the one. judge of the surrogate court. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some of the, so what are some of the specific responsibilities these days of the surrogate court? It, are, basic, are this almost the same as they were? That, that, exactly the same. Uh, we, it's the place where a will is probated when someone dies, and they leave assets in their name that have to be spoken for uh, after they died, because it's left in their name. They can't speak for them any longer. Uh, it is a place where guardians appointed for children and a court, uh, it is an office that assists superior court mm -hmm. when guardians have to be, p be appointed for adults. And it's also a place where adoptions uh, take place. Okay, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get into we'll that get in into a second. That. Right, um, how long have you been surrogate here in the county? Uh, 1994, July July 1st, 1994, I took office. So it's now been 14 years, Joe. <laughs> when you say wills need to be probated uh, by the surrogate's right. office, um, give us a scenario. What exactly happens? Okay. A, a person dies, uh, his or her next of kin comes into mm -hmm. your office. What happens? What, what happens then? Uh, when someone dies, um, usually... Uh, Someone goes and has to try to make a financial transaction and finds out they can't do that. Why? Because they went to the bank to go collect some, some money and mm -hmm. they found that the money is in the name of that person alone. It's not jointly held. They go collect an ins insurance policy and there's no named beneficiary. They go to try to sell a house and the, the house is, is now in the name of the, only that person. When that happens, they need to come in and probate the will. They get a, they get a death certificate which demonstrates that someone dies. The death certificate is attain, obtained from the town in which the person died in. If they died in Morristown Memorial, the death certificate would be in Morristown. But they go to the county in which a person was a resident. So if suppose they died in Florida on vacation, they mm -hmm. still would come to Morris County to probate the will. They need an original death certificate and the original will with original signatures on it. And then they can probate that will in, Superior, in, in, in surrogate's court. What happens or what problems are presented, uh, John, if a person okay. dies without a will? Well, without a will, basically, people don't understand that everyone has a will right now, whether they wrote one or not. It's called the, st the, st the laws of the state of New Jersey. If you die without a will, it becomes a crapshoot. It may wind up to be exactly what you would have done had you wrote a will, but it may not. I ask people this, how many people have actually decided to leave all of their money to the state of New Jersey when they die? Now, everyone laughs when I say that when I give presentations because it's very hard, you know, it's very hard if you wanted to leave all your money to New Jersey. Because <laughs> in-laws uh, uh, get, uh, get your money, uh, uh, bloodline will receive money. Um, it's uh, it's uh, your, your direct bloodline. In-laws, though, can't receive any money. In-laws become outlaws. <laughs> um, but suppose someone dies and leaves a wife. Well, a wife yeah. usually will get mm -hmm. most, most of all of the money, mm -hmm. or children. Uh, but if there's no wife and there's no children, then parents get it. If there's no parents, then brothers and sisters get it. If, if there are no brothers and sisters or one of them is dead, their children get it. So okay. you see how far you out you're getting? Line, yeah. And it comes to a point where I ask this question, how, much, how, much, how many people out there would actually give money to someone they wouldn't give a dime to today if they mm -hmm. were alive. Yeah. Now, without a will, that can happen very easily. It's probably happening right now as we speak. So that's something yeah. that you need to keep in mind mm 
when you're making a will? When you're making a will? Well, when you're making a will, what are you doing? You're actually deciding how you want your assets to be divided right. left in your name. You're deciding who's the quarterback, who is the executor, who is the person that's going to do the handoff from where your assets uh, uh, are, mm -hmm. as the day you die, to the people you want it to get. You are in total command, total charge. And even if someone takes that executor back to superior court and challenges that will, the will is a pretty sacred document. Typically, the executor and your wishes dominate. The, the, the laws that govern all of this, do mm -hmm. they change on a regular basis? Or are they pretty no, much... No, no. Um, they don't change on a regular basis. There's, there's actually... My answer could be yes and no. They don't change on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Laws, probate laws, they try to stay consistent as possible for as long as possible. However, mm -hmm. the probate law did change significantly in, um, in March 2005. And uh, how so? It mostly in, in, the, in dying without the will area. So you see, before 2005, if a person died and left a spouse and, and children, mm -hmm. and the children were children of both, there were no stepchildren, the spouse would inherit the first $50,000 and then split with the children 50-50. Well, after the 9-11 incident, they found out there was a quite, that could be, somebody could start out with the very little assets and then wind up with a tremendous amount after they die, and that became a burden. So they changed the law in 2005 to say, if a person dies without a will, leaving a spouse, the spouse inherits the entire estate if the children are children of both. Okay. It put in one stepchild into that picture that's still a bloodline to the person who died. Then there's a formula that they put together. Joe, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, when you have these attorneys and these legislators down mm -hmm. there trying to change the law, they make that formula very, very complicated. And we try to outline that in the booklet that I handed yeah, to Yeah, uh, I was just going to ask you, is, are there any documents or any guides that mm -hmm. your office puts together? And you have one here. Let's... Uh, how can someone get that, just by calling your office? They call the office right. at 973-285-6500. And this is a free, free document mm -hmm. that the county provides through the surrogate's court to anyone who wants to call and, 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 and get some basic information. Uh, people who come in who have told me that they've gotten the booklet, sometimes they're reading it as they're waiting for, waiting for my probate clerks mm -hmm. to help them through the probate process. They tell me that the booklet if they have read it before, it was very helpful, or as they're reading it, they say, too bad I didn't know about this, about some of this basic information before I had to come here. And uh, we'll give you that phone number again uh, at the end of the program uh, in case you, you missed it this time around. John, I want to talk to you about a couple of other uh, responsibilities okay. of uh, your office. Um, there is something that is called a Miners Intermingled Trust, Trust Fund, Fund. Yes. which the uh, surrogate's uh -huh. office right. administers. What is this, and specifically, what does your office do? When a child comes into money, there's a, there's a, new, there's a law, not a new, new law, it's actually laws across the United States, mm -hmm. Uniform Gift to Minors Act. It's sometimes referred to as the Jackie Coogan Law because he was a, a, a child actor in the early 1900s who made a million dollars, and when he turned 21, his parents had spent all his money. So when a child comes into money, even if they have parents, um, the money comes to the surrogate fund. I have about $25 million worth of children's money, and uh, we go out to bid for that and try to get the highest rates. And each year, uh, we, we invest it only in, in commercial banks that are FDIC insured, but I manage that money for the children. So uh, if a, a child could, uh, could slip and fall and, and, and get a lawsuit. An insurance and, settlement and, or something, and, yeah. And get a, uh, uh, something very, very bad could have happened to that child, mm -hmm. and maybe fifty thousand dollars, or ten thousand dollars, or three hundred thousand dollars. That comes to the surrogate fund, and I put it in several different banks, making sure that no bank has more than a hundred thousand dollars. You also mentioned that your office is involved in adoptions. How so? Yes. Well, the when someone has to be, be uh, when some when parents want to adopt a child there's a whole bunch of documentation and a whole bunch of responsibility to the natural parents that has to be guaranteed that are in and ready for superior court to have the hearing in order to be able to declare that adoption final the surrogate's office now it's not the surrogate's court now the surrogate's office as an assist, as a deputy clerk to Superior Court, gathers all those documents, makes sure all the investigations of the agencies have taken place, sometimes even helps the, 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 the parents who want to adopt find that agency. And uh, if there's 
fingerprint requirements that have to be done. We make sure that's all in place so that when Superior Court meets that particular day, and it's usually a very happy occasion. That is the happy occasion of the office. Remember, my office goes down with the files, assist the Superior Court judge. Uh, in uh, Last year was John Dangler's, uh, uh, Judge, judge Dangler. Mm-hmm. And uh, the final decision was done in Superior Court. Okay. So your office actually walks the prospective parents through the adoption process? Not, not walks them through, but we, we make sure that all the documents are in place. Okay. The, uh, the, the, the agency that they go to really okay. helps them the most. The time we become a little more helpful is when they're step-parent adoptions. Sometimes they don't have to go to an agency because, of course, maybe five or six or seven hundred dollars to go to an agency. I don't really, mm-hmm. not, I, I think that's what they're charging today. It might even be more than that. But we, in those particular cases, yes, we do help them a lot more when there's a, a child, a natural child of one parent living in the household mm-hmm. and the other parent wants to adopt. Okay. And then, they, then we help them a little bit more in that particular case. How, about how many adoptions does your office uh, uh, do during the course of a year? Uh, about 100 a year. Really? Yeah. So that's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing when parents do that. To, uh, this, the basically, they're really saving the lives of these particular children. They could be anywhere in the world. And yeah. they come in and they get adopted by people in Morris County. They come in to live in a wonderful area, don't they, Joe? They do. They, yeah. do. they sure do. John, I'm going to ask you to give us... Um, the uh, phone number and the uh, other contact information for your office again sure. in case someone missed it. I know you also, your office also has a, a very informative website as well. Yeah, okay. My, the phone number is 973-285-6500. And when you need to come in and use the surrogate court to probate a will, I, would, I really prefer when people make an appointment because then we have a dedicated person, a dedicated time allocated to that particular person because someone died in the family Mm-hmm. They're coming in uh, sometimes very nervous, certainly with a, with a tremendous sorrow, and I want to guarantee personalized attention. Yeah. Is, there, is, is there a time frame in which a person should come into your office after the death of a loved one? There, or is, I mean, there is no real time frame. Okay. I'll, give you, I'll give you an instance. Someone did come in uh, just last year after 15 years of somebody died because mm. uh, the, her mother and father owned the house, and uh, she lived in the house and stayed in the house, and they were both dead. And okay. so when she went to sell the house okay. about 15 years later. Okay. Well, and she realized that the house is still in her, her mother and father's name. Yeah. She had to probate their wills in order to be able to get the, to uh, deal with yeah. the real estate agencies. Okay. Well, certainly uh, you shouldn't wait 15 years, but <laughs> no. uh, uh, after a, an appropriate length of time, come into your office. Sure. John Picarero, thank you very much for being Good with job. us and shedding some light on the office of the surrogate, uh, the surrogate's court here in Morris County. Now, if you have a question about county government, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office, and that telephone number is 973-285-6010. You may also visit us on the web at co.morris.nj.us. I'm Joe Garifo. Thank you very much for being with us. Tune in again next week at this time, won't you, for another edition of Focus on Morris County.